Realtor commissions are going away. That is exactly what you would be led to believe uh, if you were to read any of the articles that are coming out right now. Now, I'm going to actually do a deep dive webinar on this on Tuesday, the 26th at 6 p.m. Um, we're going to share a URL below. Uh, register there. But I do want to hit a few key points about some of the news that's coming out. Now, uh, if you guys have been seeing any of the news, uh, I think this was on NBC Nightly News. It was on like all the nightly news on CNN, on Fox News. Everywhere you look, they're talking about a settlement that took place in the real estate space. Um, there were three key things that I want to point out here. And again, we're going to do a deep dive on this in a webinar Tuesday, the 26th at 6 p.m. Check the link on this video and uh, register for that. If you can't make it, no problem. It will be recorded. You can check out the, the recording of it um, so long as you register. Make sure you register up front. There's three key points I want to address. Number one, uh, buyer agent commission is now no longer going to be included in the MLS. Now, the MLS, for those that don't know, is that's the database where all of the homes for sale are put by real estate agents for the most part. Uh, and so the way it's been since the advent of the Internet, honestly, was that database included a line item that said, hey, if you're a buyer's agent, if you're representing a purchaser of this listing, this is how much you get compensated for that listing or for selling that home. That line item is going to go away. And so that's no longer going to be advertised in that database. Now, I, I think this is going to have some, some ramifications. Again, I want to go in deep on this on the webinar on Tuesday, the 26th at 6 p.m. Number one, that that commission is not going to be advertised anymore moving forward. Um, this is proposed to start in July. Now, some of these agreements, they still have to be approved by you know, the courts, the judge, you know, other entities, the you know, powers that be. But if it all holds up as it's proposed, uh, this would go into effect sometime in July of 2024. Number two. This is going to change who pays the buyer agent in practice, maybe. And I will say real estate agents have done a uniquely poor job of explaining how they as buyer agents get paid. Truth is, is that most states and, and Virginia is included in this, um, have a, a, a buyer representation agreement between the buyer, the buyer's agent and that buyer's agent's broker. Um, and it has always been the case that the buyer in that agreement has agreed to pay their agent a set fee. You should say what should have been happening all along is that explanation should have been there that, hey, look, there is a chance and there always was a chance that the seller in a, in a real estate transaction was not going to cover that full fee. Um, and I, I've had that before. I've worked for less than 1% at times for clients because that's all that the, the seller of their home was offering. So this is not a new thing that the seller doesn't have to offer a 2.5% or a 3% commission to the buyer's agent. Um, that's just false. You know, that has never been a requirement. Um, and again, I can stand here and tell you uh, definitively that I have taken less than that on, on a, a sale because that was what was being offered. Now, the point is, is that the, the buyer agent obviously was, was agreeing to pay X amount to their agent. However, that fee could be offset or completely taken care of by the seller uh, in, in that instance. And, and really the way it was working was the seller was paying a commission to the, the agent they were working with. And that listing agent or their brokerage was then taking some of that to pay the buyer's agent. So who's going to pay the buyer agents moving forward? Moving forward, it will no longer go from seller to seller's agent, seller's agent to buyer's agent. It will go seller to buyer's agent or to buyer's agent. Uh, and so who is going to wind up paying the buyer's agent? That will change. Um, but you know, this notion that commissions are just going away, <laughs> that's not true. Um, we haven't all banded together as real estate agents and agreed to simply work pro bono you know, for the rest of our careers. Unfortunately, uh, we're not independently wealthy uh, yet, and uh, we have to put food on the table for our family. So we will still work for a fee, and the who pays that fee will change uh, d depending on whether you're a seller or you're a buyer. A seller, again, the, the relationship between the seller and the seller's agent really isn't changing for the most part. What is changing is 
how that buyer agent gets paid. And so when you're buying a house now, it's going to be incumbent. And this is this is change number three that I want to talk about. Um, it is going to be much more incumbent. You just like when you sell a house, for instance, you would never you just randomly pick an agent, have them put your house on the MLS, just get a feel for how it's going, and then maybe change up and, and jump to another agent and have them list the house, right? You usually do your homework up front when, when you're selling a house. Uh, on the buy side, it was very much uh, often a process of putting the cart before the horse, right? You, you, you know, uh, consumers, and, and I was guilty of this too as a consumer, we would identify a home we wanted to see, we would meet up with an agent there who it was really was irrelevant. You know, uh, we would meet somebody there to open the door for us. And then we would find out, hey, is this agent somebody that you know, makes sense for me to actually work with? That is going to probably get turned around. And so what's going to wind up happening is that before real estate agents are able to really show property, they're going to have to have an agreement in place because look, if they show you the property, there is no promise for, for that, that buyer's agent that there's any compensation coming, right? Most of the time there probably will be, and I, um, in the webinar I'm going to explain how uh, it is a huge competitive disadvantage for sellers to, to not offer any commission to a buyer's agent. Uh, again, 100% of choice they have, but they will be at a competitive disadvantage. Uh, so there is no guarantee for a, a buyer's agent, a real estate agent that is helping a buyer buy a house, that they have any promise of compensation on the buy side. So uh, in practice, that means that there's going to have to be an agreement up front, right, between the buyer's agent and the buyer about, hey, if we go see this house and you like it and decide to move forward, what's the compensation going to look like, right, in the event the seller's not offering any at all? Uh, and so it is going to change a little bit of the culture about how we approach buying a home. Um, we're not going to start from the point of, ooh, pretty house, let me see it, and then I'll interview real estate agents later. Um, it's going to have to start the same way that we do when we sell a house. It starts from the point of, hey, let me interview some real estate agents. Again, if I decide that I want representation through the process, help, marketing, all of that stuff, I need to interview agents and find out who I might be best aligned with and then move forward in the process. Home buying is going to now mimic that process. Uh, you're going to have to sit down ahead of time, not put the cart before the horse, and decide, hey, who is best prepared to represent my interests moving forward? And uh, again, I, I, I liken this a lot to, uh, you know, I, I come from a background of being a police officer, uh, and the, the court system is a, is a good metaphor sometimes for me to understand how this works. In court, you have the prosecutor and you have the defense attorney, right? Your prosecutor represents the state. The defense attorney represents the accused. Uh, and so, you know, the state would never show up. The like governor doesn't show up on his own to, or her own to, you know, represent a, a criminal case. No, they have a prosecutor there to represent the state. That's the prosecutor's job. Um, the defendant is you know, they have their option. They're allowed to do it. Uh, they're allowed to show up to court to be their own representation, but it's generally seen as a really bad idea to do that because you're going up against a prosecutor who does this for a living and is probably going to stomp you. Uh, and so, um, the representation is there to protect the parties involved and, and put the best case forward. Real estate transactions are much the same, but much like the court system, um, or I guess there are some differences, but like the court system, if you're hiring a defense attorney or if you're a buyer buying a home and you're hiring a buyer's agent, you have to factor in a cost for that. Uh, it's going to cost you money to hire an attorney. Now, the big difference, obviously, in this metaphor is that in, in our judicial system, if you can't afford an attorney, one will be provided for you at no cost, right? I was very familiar with reading those Miranda rights as a police officer. You don't have any constitutional right to a buyer's agent when you buy a house. And so if you can't afford one, um, you know, th there, there isn't a whole lot of work around for that at this point, unless you're only targeting homes where the seller is agreeing to offer some compensation to that buyer's agent on your behalf. Now, again, that does give them a competitive advantage um, because obviously that's going to open up the field of buyers that are able to vie for their house, right? They may have the down payment necessary or able to qualify for the mortgage, but they don't have enough liquid cash to then also pay a buyer's agent. Um, 
it's going to open a larger field of competitors for that listing and therefore obviously demand increases price and improves terms. Uh, but those are really the main three things that are changing through this. Real estate commissions are not going away. There's a whole lot of other really misleading things that have been coming out. Um, and I want to address all of this and go in depth, in detail with exactly what this means for consumers. Uh, because again, not being born a salesman, uh, I tend to side with consumers more than I side with industry. Uh, and so I just like to be transparent and explain exactly what this means for consumers moving forward. Some of the things that I want to cover on this webinar, again, Tuesday, the 26th at 6 p.m. is, is this going to cause home values to fall? I've seen that in a lot of news articles. Oh my gosh, home values are going to fall. There's going to be relief for buyers as it relates to home values and home prices. We're going to talk about that. Um, will I get less money for selling my home? Sort of the opposite of that, right? Or, or the uh, inverse uh, consequence of that. Will I get less money for my home because home values are falling? We are absolutely going to address that. Half of realtors are going out of business. I have seen this headline. We're going to address that. I, I think a lot of the answers to these questions are not going to be what you think. Some of them are, are the, the, the answers are neither yes nor no. It's somewhere in the middle and we're going to unpack all of it. Again, I want to go in depth in more detail in some of these three points that we talked about as well as some of these other questions that uh, are outstanding. We're going to go in depth on that on the webinar Tuesday the 26th at 6 p.m. Register for the webinar at the URL below. And uh, if you can't make it there, uh, you will have a replay that is sent out to you. For everybody that registers, uh, you'll be able to watch the replay. I hope to see you there.